Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in crypto and bring it on a bite-sized piece. And today, as the thumbnail suggests, we're going to do a little review of our price predictions on January 7, 2021 and see if we hit our goals. So we're going to take a look at those predictions on June 30th. And we're also going to talk about did we hit our exit strategy. So first of all, to go over that, we already know today is December 30th. And we already know that the, the market's around eh, 2.23 trillion, 2.3, give or take about 100 billion or something like that. And uh, it's not going so great as far as price action, a lot of good news coming in. But the real question is, did the prices match up to what we predicted? And to do that, we we'll have to take a look back at what the price predictions actually were. So let's go back to January 7th. And we have three categories here, or three uh, columns. January 7th, the price was 38,000. And in January 7th, 2021, or the end of year prediction, or sometime within that time frame. I thought the Bitcoin go to 150K. And the probability I have was 10. I thought for sure it would actually happen. And uh, guess what? I think as we all know, that did not happen. So we're gonna take a look here at uh, the all time high was actually 68K. So we never got close 150K. And today's price is 47,606. So there is uh, a, a propensity to take a look at and say, well, Gosh, it's 47,000 and uh, we thought we go to 150K and we only had a 60K, so that's awful. But I want you to focus on is this next column here called ATL or the all time low and just to see where we've gone. So in all honesty, uh, we started the year at 29,021 and now it's 47,606. So I know some people are, th are saying right now, well, Rob, that doesn't help me because I bought at the all time high. Well, it's okay because so did I. I did the exact same thing in 2017. I bought it around 8,500, then 12,000, then 17,000, and somewhere around $19,000. And the thing is, like we talked about with uh, with Nick Murray, we try not to uh, mistake the short-term uh, revenue loss or pullbacks for the long-term uh, permanent losses because you only lose if you sell. And that's what I thought uh, all the way back then, dollar cost averaging for four years. So on this uh strategy or on this price prediction we did not hit that and that is on us because uh we just did not think that it would not hit around 100 150k and here we are at the top of 68k next one so if we take a look here ethereum ethereum on january 7th was uh 1.2k and we thought it'd go to 10 we thought it was about an eight so it would happen all time high was only 4800 and then today's price is 3700 dollars so that's didn't hit that one either. But remember, the all time low was seven around 700 bucks for Ethereum. So you'd still be up pretty well, depending. And actually, if you hit around here, not too bad, 729. Next one, Chainlink. Now this one, I thought, okay, it was 17 bucks on January 7th. I thought it would go to 35. Uh, and we actually exceeded that. It actually went to $52. But the next column is concerning, which is the price today, 20 bucks. It's lost over half of its value in a very short amount of time. And the all-time low is $11. So really, you've only doubled your money if you hit the all-time low as far as this year. So that is why when we get into the exit strategies, it's super important that we always stick to our plan. My goals are not your goals. This channel is not investment advice, it's investment opinion. But in all honesty, uh, Chainlink was one you should have uh, or I should have uh, really follow my ego strategy. And I did to a point. We'll get to that in a second. And then also Cardano. Hey, on January 7th is 32 cents. I thought I'd go to three bucks. It went to three bucks. Did out pretty well. Unfortunately, today it's $1.36. But remember, the all-time low for Cardano for this year was 17 cents. Not too bad. Next one, Theta. Uh, it was two bucks. And I thought I'd go to 10 uh, and it went to 14. So this one actually exceeded my price prediction pretty well. But again, the price today is only $5 and the all time low is a buck 76. So if you bought at the low, you're still doing pretty good. If you bought the high, not too great, right? Again, this is why exit strategies and time in the market is more important than timing the market. Next, we've got Celsius. This one is concerning. On January, it was six bucks. Uh, the all time high was only eight bucks. Today's price is 450 and the all time low was only 350. So it's not too close from its all time low. What's going on with Celsius? Remains to be seen. Next one, we've got, whoops, uh, Stellar. 
This one is one of my bigger losers. Uh, 33 cents on January 7th. I thought it could go up to two bucks, but that could be reasonable. It only hit 77 cents. The all-time low was 12 cents, so okay. But the all-time low between now and the price day is 27 cents. So again, this is another one that's just a kind of a not a great one and probably one I'll probably prune from my investments. Polkadot, $10. I thought it could go to 50 bucks. And guess what? We did it. Hit $53, so that's pretty good. Unfortunately, today's today's price is 27, so roughly around half. But the all-time low was 820. And of course, just remember just how much we've actually come in just one short year from the all-time lows to even just today's price, forgetting the all-time highs. Next one is Tezos, another one I missed on this one. I saw it, it was 265. I thought I could go to 20 bucks, only hit $8. And today it's only four bucks, so not too good. VeChain was actually a pretty good one. Uh, it was at three cents. I thought, eh, I could go to a quarter. People thought I was a little crazy, might've been. But guess what, the all-time high? was a quarter. So not too bad, but again, today's price is eight cents, but the all-time low was only a penny. So you'd still be doing pretty good if you hit the all-time low. All-time high, not so much. And actually, for all the all-time highs, no one's doing really good except for Polygon. I'll get to that in a second. EOS, another loser. Uh, I was at 340, I thought I'd go to 30. I thought the probably was five, I was like, nah, maybe. It only went to 13 bucks. And today's price is $3. EOS is uh, vastly underperforming. Next one, we've got... Uniswap. So we had it at 660. And I thought, eh, I think I can go to 20 bucks. And guess what? I doubled it. It actually worked out. It was at $44. I thought that uh, the decks would do pretty well and, and gain steadily, but it really massively overshot. Unfortunately, well, I did come back a little bit. We're at $17 and uh, for today's price, but the low was 468. So again, we've done pretty well in just a short amount of time. Next one, we've got Voyager. This is one of my, one of my misses. It was at 29 cents. And I thought I'd go to 30 bucks. And this one, people did really think I was crazy. But I thought, you know, with what's going on with the, with the partnerships, with them going to the EU, with the Voyager loyalty program coming out with the debit card and potentially loans, I thought this could be great. And uh, on tw it was 29 cents on January 7th. In three weeks, it went to $7.22. Great big run. But unfortunately, it pulled back. And today's price only $3. But again, the all-time low was 13 cents for Voyager. So... Next one, Ave, not didn't do so hot. I it was 122. I thought I could do well. I thought I'd go 2,000. It only went to 650 bucks. But the all-time all time low was 83 dollars, and today it's 250. So you're looking at uh, well, around 4x or so. And then uh, last, <laughs> next to last, really the last, Bitcoin Cash. Uh, it was 481. I thought I'd go to $8,000 because I thought you know with PayPal coming in and and them picking up uh, Bitcoin. Ethereum, Litecoin, and Bitcoin Cash, well, I think it could do pretty well. But guess what? <laughs> Nobody wants Bitcoin Cash right now. And uh, it went from 481 and the high was 1518. So you could have tripled your money. Unfortunately, the price today is 431. So it's less than what it was in January. And the all time low is only 340. So in all honesty, didn't do so hot. And then lastly, XRP, hey, you know what? Price today is around 90 cents. Correct me in the comments, but it's doing pretty good for the SEC. And just, I wanted you to imagine one thing. How high would XRP be right now if it wasn't in a lawsuit? But remember, SEC is here to protect you. Anyhow, let me know what you think about that in the comments section. Let's move on to the June 30th price predictions, which we did a follow-up video. Some other cryptos that I had uh, had in my portfolio it was kind of lingering. I didn't really think too much of them. And I have been dollar cost averaging at this point. Let's just skip ahead to everything. So BAT, our basic attention token, uh, the price was 58 cents on June 30th. I thought I'd go to three bucks. Didn't even hit that. I hit a buck 60. Uh, unfortunately, uh, today's price, actually today's price is $1.22. So, so from the price prediction that I did on June 30th, 58 cents to a buck 20. Could have doubled your money. That's not too bad. But uh, the all-time low was 20 cents, so it's still up pretty well for the year. Next one, we've got... Uh, 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 there we go. StormX did not do so hot. It was a penny when we talked about it. I thought, well, maybe it'd get 50 cents because it's uh, doing pretty well. and had a nice partnership with Walmart, but that one kind of went away. And uh, it went from a penny... <laughs> And uh, it went to today's price to a whopping two cents. So you could have doubled your money and the all-time low was 0 0.002, but 
but it is what it is. Next one we take a look at and we've got T Fuel. And T Fuel was at 38 cents. Today's price is at 20 cents. So you would be below water on T Fuel. The all time high was 67 cents. I thought I'd go to a dollar because all things are going on with Theta, but right now, not so much. But remember, the all time low for this year was 0 0.02. So could have been pretty well depending on when you got in. AVAX. Now, here's one that's another one, another uh, L0, L1 that just uh, overperformed, did great. So on the day of this pricing, it was almost 10 bucks. Uh, I thought it could go to 75, but guess what? It went to 136. So we exceeded this one. And then today's price, it says 967, but it's around $103. That's uh, incorrect. And the all time low was $3. So if you got anywhere along that continuum, you're probably doing pretty good on Avalanche. Not too bad. A little better than Polkadot, that's for sure. Next one, we've got uh, Silo. And that was at 0.003 and uh now it's at 0 0.003 so that one didn't do too well i thought maybe it could go to uh two cents didn't even hit that went from fraction of a penny to really nothing cent token this one did awful uh went from point it's one from three cents on june 30th the price today is five cents i thought i'd go to a dollar but at least you'd be up a little bit if you still uh invested in that that time frame that we talked about all time low to uh two cents Next one is Solana, another big winner here. It was at $23 when I was talking about it, and uh, I had been dollar cost averaging for a bit at that point. Uh, the all-time high was $251, so pretty good. So I think everybody's pretty happy about Solana, but the one thing that concerns me, though, is that it's taken quite a dip from its all-time high from $250 down to $174 today. But the all-time low was buck sixty-two, so you'd still be doing pretty darn good. Polygon, I think this is one of the biggest winners out there. Uh, and this is why, because you went from, and the all-time low was a penny. That's pretty, that's a, a penny. Uh, the price that we talked about it on June 30th was 72 cents. And I thought, well, maybe it could hit to four bucks, but it went to 282, almost three, but uh, not too bad. But the thing that you have to, to look at is, first of all, the all-time low at a penny. So the price today is 254. And the price today at 254 is pretty darn close the, the all-time high of 282 so i think uh polygon's got a long room to run next one swiss borg didn't do so hot uh, i thought i could go to a buck 50 and i call it at 61 cents today's price is 60 cents so that's eh, a wash but uh, the all-time low was 22 cents next one is iota this one not so great and it was at 60 cents i will be pruning this from my portfolio i don't see it doing much maybe i'm wrong correct me in the comments but 60 cents the all-time low was 27 but the price today is $1.48. So if you got it on the day that I made the price prediction, at least you'd be up, what, almost 3x? So not too bad. Two, two and a half x, not too bad. And the next one, BTT. <laughs> uh, it was at 0 0.002. Today it's at 0 0.002. But the all-time low was 0 0.0002. So you'd probably be up a little bit. Or actually, you'd be the, be the same for here, unless you got in the low. So not too bad, but nothing to be excited about. Filecoin is a big loser. Um, June 30th was 42 bucks. Uh, today it's 34. So not too bad. You probably, if you bought it in on those price predictions, you'd probably be down a little bit. The all time high was uh, 212 though. That's pretty good. Um, I thought I'd go to 300 bucks, but it hasn't even done anywhere near that at whatsoever. Next one, we've got Mana. And this is the one that uh, I've been holding for a long time. For instance, I did the, the video about it was. A conversation between Barry Seibert and Raul Powell. They talked about the Central Land. That was pretty good. Picked it up for next to nothing a, year, a couple years ago. And uh, at this point, it was 52 cents. I go, well, it's not so bad. And uh, I thought, well, maybe go to a buck. And it went to $3.31. But again, that has nothing. That I, I thought it could be a big play in years to come. But I didn't expect Facebook to change its name to Meta, as in Metaverse and everything to blow up like that. It just, I can tell you where this whole market is going I, I can tell you where it's going it's going to eat up everything uh defi and and uh, uh decentralized products and uh, physical products and virtual uh, land and actually currency and, and and just everything you think of and tokenization of different assets it's going to just eat up everything i just can't tell you exactly the right specific dates but that's why I like to diversify and spread things around because it seems like they're like fireworks. Like some things will pop off at one point and then the other thing wants to just be a bunch of laggards and want not do anything. And then one will pop off another point and then we'll have a bunch of laggards. 
And that's pretty much how this crypto space has been going for quite some time. And Mana is one of those proofs of what's going to happen. Anyhow, next one, Digibyte. I don't know. This one's been, everybody talks to me about how great this is going to be. But on June 30th, it was uh, 3 cents. All time high was 16 cents. So, okay, I get you. But uh, price today is 3 cents. So the exact same price as June 30th. So pretty much a wash. But the all time low was 2 cents. So it doesn't really move. Maybe it's like a stable penny. I don't know. Uh, Meld, that's a token that hasn't been released yet and maybe on June 31st. And then also one of my favorites, World Mobile Token, got released after this, actually just two weeks ago. And uh, no, a week, week and a half ago, a week ago. And uh, they went to 55 cents. I thought it would go to a dollar, but not yet. So that's what we have as far as the price predictions and how we did. So again, it's important that some of these, like... No one's going to hit all their price predictions. First of all, no one's Nostradamus. No one knows exactly where it's going. But you kind of take a look at, well, what is the team doing? What has the track record been? What are the announcements? What kind of partnerships are, are happening? And where is everything going? What is it? Is it actually actually doing something as far as like real world use case utility? Things might go up and uh, we take a look at those things. Some of them haven't popped off yet. Maybe they will in the future. But right now, this is where we are at. But the next big question is, did we stick to our exit strategy? Because the ones that that uh, that don't pop off, they just sit there, right? We don't do anything with those. But the ones that do, we have to make sure that we take those profits along the way because we dollar cost in, dollar cost out. So this is how I did for my exit strategy. And just to be totally transparent, didn't hit every single one of them. So this was my ETH Ethereum exit strategy. And I thought it would go to 10,000 like we talked about. So I just kind of parceled out. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Actually, this is uh, 100. This was 80 percent, 100 percent of 80 ETH. Excuse me. And because I had 100 ETH total, I'm never going to sell all my crypto. But I thought this would be a good place to start. And when we talked about this, I did hit the first one, the two thousand dollars. I did hit it, and I sold. And I took a lot of heat for it because people were like, "You're an idiot. Ethereum is going to 10,000, 15,000, 20,000, maybe." I don't know, but that's my plan. Again, my goals aren't your goals. And I had plans to do different things with real estate, uh, with land, with my other businesses. And to do that, I need capital to do those things. And this is what I did. So I sold out and uh, that's where we're at. Did I hit the next one? No, I did not. Because as we can see here, price prediction, Ethereum only hit $4,800. So it didn't trigger my next point or 4868 So I was just underneath where it was supposed to be. Next one, Chainlink. Uh, this one, if we're looking at it like this, because Chainlink's all-time high was $53, $52, I should have sold out everything. Well, 80% of everything, but I didn't. I didn't because I got greedy. And that's just the truth. That's just the truth, my friends. I'm sorry to tell you, uh, even I get these delusions of grandeur and go, no, no, it's gonna go, it's gonna go higher. So I actually hit the 26 point the 28 and the 30 but when the 32 and 35 came i'm like there's no way i think i think chain link can go up higher i did not sell much to my chagrin and now i'm thinking to myself why well, i should have sold it then bought back in at 20 bucks or whatever else it is right now so uh that's another lesson for me that i need to i mean it's good i'm actually able to to hit these targets i'm pretty good at buying the dip the problem i always had was selling and now i know where i'm at but there's a caveat and i'll tell you in a second next one was bitcoin and the first point that I when it was going to sell at 60,000, I did hit this point. And people were like, you're an idiot because Bitcoin's going to 150, 250, 300, 500,000 this year. You don't get it. You were just from 2017 and this time it's different. It's never different. As long as there is greed in the world, people will always manipulate and fix prices and try to be as greedy as possible. Even me. So I'm greedy. Unfortunately, I get the, the, the greed bug, but I try to shake it off as best as possible. So this selling point at 60, I pulled the trigger and I sold it. And it was good because I was able to buy another property here in Puerto Rico. I'm going to do another uh, video about how I took the gains from crypto and rolled them into a house. Some of those was I sold crypto, but the majority was actually crypto loans. And I'll talk about that in the video next week. Next one's two or three more to go. EOS, I sold at ten dollars, uh, or two, four and six. I don't think I hit the ten because I got greedy again. So that's on me. 
ADA strategy, I sold at a dollar, a dollar eighty, and two twenty. I again missed the two sixty and three because I would got greedy. But remember, a lot of the Cardano that I have, I rolled that into uh, my stake pools, D News One and D News Two, so I can't touch those. But uh, the different Cardano that I had picked up uh, along after that, the things that I had staked, I actually did sell because I needed to. And then also, uh, I needed well, I needed those for the uh, for the house that we talked about, Theta. I hit the first three and I messed up and didn't hit, didn't sell at nine and 10. Again, that one's on me and that's it. So to answer your questions, to make a, this long video a little shorter is we try to do the best that we can with the information that we have and then we work from there. And as long as we just have some sort of plan, it's worked out pretty well. I mean, in all honesty, and um, there's just like we talked about yesterday, there's some projects that I think I'm going to do quite well. I'm going to talk about those, which ones I'm going to keep as far as my portfolio, which ones I'm going to get rid of. You already heard some of them I'm going to get rid of now, but I'm, there's going to be more. And I'm going to start to uh, consolidate and run into other ones because I think that there's some more things that we could do. And some are just laggards. And just like we talked about before, there's some projects that just do not take off. There, we have over 1,000, 2,000, 4,000 cryptos. Do you think they're all going to take off? They can't. But uh, there are some that I'll leave. There's some that I think could still do it. So I'll leave those. And I'm very picky, but we'll see how it goes. And that's it for today. So look, honest video, how to get it out, how to uh, just uh, eat a little crow, but that's what it is. So if you found value in today's video, give it a thumbs up. Also consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about are time sensitive, especially in the, the year. But that's it for today. So thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it. See you on the next one.